In this tutorial, we're going to add a background image to our app, as well as text fields for scoring and time left. There is a growing trend in programming today to separate layout from functionality. Perhaps the most extreme example of this is web design. In web design languages, CSS, or cascading style sheets, are used to store layout information. HTML is used to store content, and JavaScript is used to store code that creates action. Similarly, in Android, XML files are used to store layout information, while Java source code is used to create action. In this tutorial, the first thing we're going to do is add a background image to our otherwise black background in our app. While we could do this programmatically, for the reasons we've just discussed, it's better to use the XML file already present in our app for this purpose. The first thing we need to do is take an image from our computer and upload it into Android Studio. In the official Mobile CSP course materials, if you look in the Turn Off Lights template, you'll see there are three files here, two image files and a sound file. I'm going to go ahead now and just download those onto my computer. And I'm going to use this kitchen file as the background for our app. Let's install those now under Android Studio. Let's install these two images both under the drawable and the MIP map directories. So first I'm going to take these two and I'm going to copy them and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to paste them. Now you can see these two folder uh, files are here. Similarly in the MIP map I'm going to come over here and I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to say new image asset and I'm going to replace the launcher icon with the light bulb that we had before. And I'm going to do the same thing now for the background image. Okay, if I look in here now, I can see that the MASH background has been installed and the uh, IC launcher uh, has been updated to be the uh, light bulb. As we add the background image and other widgets to our app, we can do it by directly manipulating the XML file, or we can use the WYSIWYG editor. In this tutorial, when we add the background image, we're going to use the XML file directly. Let's begin now by altering the XML file to add the background image that we want. Let's begin by removing this default text view with the hello world that appears at the beginning of every app. As a reminder, that's what creates this hello world message here when we first start up a new project. So we're going to delete this section completely. In addition, the parent XML file here has some padding which we're not going to be using in this app. So let's just clean that up and delete it. We're now ready to add the layout information for our MASH view. To do that, we're going to add a new bracket and we're going to go over to where our MASH view is located and we're going to copy the package name. And we're going to insert that here, followed by the term mash view, which is going to be uh, our view class that we're defining the layout for. You can see we're getting some error messages because we have failed to define the layout width and the layout height, which are required for every layout. So let's do that now. In addition to defining the width and the height of the layout, we've also added the background image with that one single line. Before we can test whether the background image will take on our new app, we have to add a couple of constructors to the MASH view class. When you're reading an XML layout from inside your code, you're required to have the two argument and three argument constructors defined for your view. In our code right now, we only have the single argument constructor defined which is this one here. So we need to add a couple more. Okay, we've added the constructors now and we're simply going to make all three of them work in the exact same way. 
So we're going to restructure our constructor slightly. We're going to take all the code that's currently in our constructor and put it in a separate initialization method and call that initialization method from each of the constructors that we have defined. So what I've done here is I've extracted all the code from the constructor and put it into this initialize, initialize method. And I've called this initialize method from each of the other constructors. As we've restructured this code, a new problem has arisen in that this final variable cannot be initialized inside our initialization method. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn that into a local variable. And now I think we're ready to test our app. And as you can see, the background image does indeed show. Now we would like to add to this a scorekeeping feature and also display the time left. But we have a problem. Normally, we would add buttons or text labels onto the screen and then create corresponding variables in our code to access these labels. However, because we're using a sophisticated Surface View class, adding these widgets on top of the Surface View is fairly challenging. But all is not lost because we have this fancy graphical interface on which we can draw. So we can simply draw the text that we need. Let's start by creating a new instance variable that will keep track of our score. Now we're going to initialize the score in our constructor, or actually in our initialization method, which is called by the constructor. And now let's create a couple of uh, utility functions to help us keep score. I've added these two utility functions, one to increment the score by one, and the other to set the score to any value the user wants. Note also in the onTouch listener, before we were displaying a toast message when the user touched the sprite. We have now commented out this toast message and are instead incrementing the score. We're now going to create a new state variable that keeps track of how much time is left on the timer. Note the t changes we have made to the timer methods to help facilitate the tracking of the amount of time we have left. The invalidate method calls in both of these methods will force a redraw. Now we need a way to display the information about the score as well as how much time is left to the user. We want to make the output look as though there were text fields in the original screen layout. Since this class already has its own onDraw method, the most convenient place to update the score and to set up the time left would be inside this method. Note the changes to the onDraw method to print the score and the time left. First, we've created a paint object, set its color to cyan, and its font size to 45. The draw text method allows us to print the score and the time left in one line, while the 30 and the 40 represent the x and the y coordinates of where the draw text method starts printing. Now it's time to test our app. 